Hey folks, welcome to Doc Talk. I'm glad you joined me today. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson. Today we're going to talk about something that we see in cattle all the time, and sometimes we don't take the time to explain what's happening. It's called bloat. We're going to discuss bloat, different strategies, why it happens, how to treat it, how to prevent it. And thanks for joining me. More after the to you by Egg Promo Source. Together we grow. Learn more at eggpromosource.com. This segment brought to you by Kansas Regenerative Medicine. Your stem cells, your health, your life. Hey folks, welcome to Doc Talk. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson here from the College of Veterinary Medicine at Kansas State University where I serve as the Jones Professor of Production Medicine and Epidemiology. And today we're going to talk about something that is a cattle disease or syndrome that is associated with nutrition. And, and really what we're talking about is bloat. And when we talk about bloat in cattle, there are two types of bloat that we're going to discuss. One is the frothy bloat, and two is free gas. And so they're both kind of self-explanatory when you start to think about it. When I think about frothy bloat, it is cattle that are on legumes or cattle that are on wheat pasture and what happens is in that rumen when we get the intake of these lush forages that are high in proteins, high in tannins, we can get a froth that is built up and, and whether it's a foam or a froth from the interaction of the microbes in the rumen with the tannins in these, these rich legumes or this in rich wheat pasture we'll get this frothy bloat and, and when you tube a calf or if you puncture a calf in the rumen you'll see the froth just, just keep coming out. The other type of bloat is called a free gas bloat and this is due to increased production of gas whenever we have the rumen microbes take a, and this is more common in a feedlot situation or more common in a calf that's on a grain diet what will happen is, is that we'll get a bout of acidosis or decreased pH of that rumen. When that happens, sometimes the animal's contractions in the rumen or the ability of that animal to burp or eructate gas out of the rumen is the sensors or the, the, the stretch receptors in that rumen don't work quite right. And so when those don't work, that animal's not able to, to belch or eructate and, and give off that gas so we get a bloated situation. Now, the clinical signs of bloat are pretty straightforward. We're going to look at the animal from behind or look at him from the front. The rumen of the animal is where the bloat occurs, and that's located on the left side of its body. And when we think of left side of a calf's body, it's, it's that. It's not us looking the left side at what we're looking at. It is the left ear, the left leg, the left side is where the rumen's located. When we have a zero, you know, we grade bloats zero, one, two, and three. A zero is no distension on either side of the calf. A bloat score of one is starting to get a slight distension on the left side of the animal where the rumen's located. On the right side is just the intestines, the small intestine, large intestine, colon. When we start to get a, to a, bloat score of two will have severe distension on the left side of the animal but the right side will be normal and then when we have the sev most severe score of bloat of a three we will see distension of both sides of the animal and we'll call it kind of a papal shape we'll have it rounded on the left side and kind of a pear shape on the right side so zero normal three is severe and and when we get a severe when, when, when we talk to people out on wheat pasture research, when you have a calf that has a bloat score of three, that animal will be chronically affected and have decreased performance the rest of its life. We're gonna talk more about bloat. We'll talk about why it happens, how you can treat these animals, what you can do with them after they've had that syndrome. More to come, thanks for watching Doc Talk. See you after these messages.
Watch Ag AM in Kansas online at agamincansas.com. Ag Promo Source is a unique group of marketing specialists with one mission, help your ag business grow. Each affiliate has their own area of expertise and they work together to bring you advice, products, and services. To get started, visit agpromosource.com. Ag Promo Source, together we grow. Healthy cows start with the new Hired Hand Automatic Livestock Sprayer. Rancher invented to provide an efficient alternative to pour-on and injectable parasite management systems. The portable design allows cattle to treat themselves head to hoof. Strategic device placement with pass-through activation technology takes the stress out of parasite treatment for cattle and the rancher, leaving more time to tend to other vital tasks on the farm. To learn more, visit cowsprayer.com. The new hired hand makes healthy cows easy. This segment brought to you by Santa Fe Trail Meats in Overbrook. Visit us online at sftmeats.com. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here from Kansas State University's College of Veterinary Medicine, where I serve as a Jones Professor of Production Medicine and Epidemiology, and we're talking about bloat. And so whether we have animals that, that are on grain diets or animals that we're kicking out on wheat pasture, we're going to run into bloat. And when we start to think about bloat and the cause of bloat, there are the two syndromes, right? We have frothy bloat on wheat pasture if you haven't kicked out on, on alfalfa. And then we'll have the free gas bloat, which is predominantly the type of bloat that we see when we, we have animals on grain. So when we're looking at our show cattle or we're looking at, at cattle that are in feedlots on finish ration, we're talking more about free gas bloat. And when we're talking about the calves kicked out on wheat, we're talking about frothy. Now, the reason why we see this and the, and the risk association with uh, bloat is different for different types of, of syndromes. So on the frothy bloat, the number one risk factor for frothy bloat on wheat pasture is over application of fertilizer. In other words, if we over fertilize or if we put more fertilizer on the wheat pasture than we did the year before, we get more lush growth and we put the same number of cattle, there's more material out there with the same number of cattle. And so when a storm pattern comes through, cattle are genetically or, or evolutionarily will go in right before a storm they see the drop and feel the drop in barometric pressure and they will consume more before the storm because then they'll go and they'll hole up or wait until the storm passes and come back out. The animal, the ruminant animal can store about five to seven days worth of food supply in the rumen. So in other words, if a calf stops eating today and a storm comes through, it'll take five to seven days before the rumen empties. So they'll go out and they'll consume too much and I think more times than not when we see problems with bloat it has more to do with weather patterns and and availability of feed stuff than than anything so when we look at frothy bloats the first thing we have to do is we have to make sure that we're applying the right amount of fertilizer make sure we have the right amount of growth if we're going to add fertilizer we need to add animals to take care of some of those you can have some preventatives that we're going to talk about as well on free gas bloats this is a sequela or a sequel to something that happened before. In most bloats, prior to bloat occurring in the animal, we will see an increase in grain overload, which will cause acidosis. Acidosis will cause the reduction in the pH in the rumen from them overtraining on the grain. That will decrease or change the rumen microbes which will then lead to more acid production in the rumen, which knocks out the stretch receptors and doesn't allow that animal to eructate or release the gas. The other thing that can happen with bloat in the feedlot pen, so it's really important that you understand where the animals are located, is what we call overbalance. And the term overbalance could be a mound that's too steep, and we've seen cattle, they'll get their feet uphill, and then they can't stand up. So you have to roll them over so that their feet are downhill and they can stand up. If a calf gets its feet uphill and it's laying down, or if it's laying in an indention, the gas bubble will actually move to the, to the ventral side or to the side where the animal then can't belch. And if they can't get up, they'll actually continue to increase gas production in the rumen, not be able to eructate, and so we see some things to that nature. When we come back, we're going to talk about how to treat free gas and frothy bloat. If you're watching Doc Talk. Thanks for joining us. More after these messages.
Rex Anstrew, veterinarian in Western Iowa. I have a veterinary clinic and uh, started doing stem cell therapy on dogs in August of 2014. And after the first two dogs, after three weeks, I saw such dramatic results. I said, hey, I have arthritis. I have joints, really need this help. Where can I go to get this done? I had stem cell therapy done in November of 2014 on my finger joints, my hip, and the ball of my left foot, uh, all of which I'd had real severe problems with. Saw a pretty dramatic uh, improvement in a short amount of time. I would certainly recommend that somebody don't wait until I'm in the position that I was in with the d damage already done to my joints. I encourage veterinarians to use it for their animals, and I encourage anybody who sees this video, if you have need, get in contact with these people because this is a phenomenal place to have this done. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Valley Vet Supply. Did you know long-range planning through the checkoff can help keep your business profitable? To successfully pass on cattle operations from one generation to the next, it's important to promote beef and keep farms and ranches profitable. Your beef checkoff helps do that. We are Mike and Martha. Armitage here at the A-Bar Ranch, Claremore, Oklahoma. We have a cow-calf uh, production company and we also have a marketing company. We have entertained groups brought to us by the Beef Checkoff, uh, such as uh, South Korean media that uh, covered our operation and brought the good news back to South Korea. That was a, a really neat experience and that we got to have young people from another country that we got to experience a lot of different things in their culture, but got to share our culture too. We live on the Squaw Creek Ranch here as a division of the A-Bar Ranch. As a, as a wife and a mother, and also with my background in more of a health field, I look at just the nutritional value, and it's, it's great that the Beef Checkoff offers that kind of information to the consumers that are out there. We both are proud to come from agricultural, more specifically ranching backgrounds. My dad is a part of the Beef Checkoff board and so the Beef Checkoff has been something that we promote and that we support what it has to offer. Not everybody who's in agriculture is tech savvy on Facebook and through social media. Most people in the city happen to be and they are very <laughs> disconnected from our day-to-day -day routines and that's one thing that makes me proud of the Beef Checkoff, them going to bat for us. Mm -hmm. uh, from those who aren't necessarily anti-ag, but just simply don't know and they aren't getting the information. As producers, uh, we're strong supporters of that and hope that many of you out there realize all of the different things that the Beef Checkoff brings to the table for us as producers. Sure Crop Fertilizers was started by my father, Don Sherman, and my mother, Shirley Sherman. Family business has started in the 80s. We predominantly focus on plant nutrients and what we can do to give growers better responses for with the fertilizer dollars that they do and what we can do to you know, make those things work better for the grower. We're based out of Seneca, Kansas. We work with growers in their soil analysis to figure out what they need and then we can put those in a blend that gives them the best results and so that we can deliver that direct to their farm so that they have those nutrients where they need them, when they need them, and so that they can apply them in a manner that's, that's very efficient to them and, and works well on their planting systems and what they're doing. Sure Crop Fertilizers has been around for a long time. We always say we're, we're big enough to take care of everything you need, but yet we're small enough to do it quickly. You can get a hold of us at 1-800-635-4743. Um, our website is surecropfertilizers.com, and you can always email me at corey at surecropfertilizers.com, and with any questions you have, and we'll be glad to answer and work with you. This segment brought to you by Kansas Soybean Commission. Progress powered by Kansas farmers. Hey folks, Dr. Dan here from Doc Talk. Thanks for joining me today. We're talking about bloat in cattle, and it's something that occurs commonly, and we're gonna talk about treatment of bloat now. So if we have cattle out on wheat pasture, and you pull in, and here's one that's, that's a bloat score one. A bloat score one is a minor bloat. It's just a puffiness on the, on the left side of the body, and, and so those animals are probably not gonna treat. But once I get to the, the bloat score two, with severe distension on the left side, and definitely a bloat score three, those animals need to be pulled in, and we need to treat them. You can be assured that most 
cattle on wheat pasture are going to be of the frothy bloat variety. Therefore, when we treat them, and the best way to find out if they're frothy bloat or free gas is to pass an orogastric tube. So we'll take an orogastric tube or a, a stomach tube, and the first thing you want to do is put a speculum in the mouth of the, the steer. Because if you don't and you pass a rubber tube, those molars on the back side of that, that cow's mouth or that steer's mouth will chew that tube in half. And, and, and that's not a good thing to have happen because when you pass that tube halfway down, the calf chews the, the orogastric tube off, you're going to wind up with half the tube in the rumen and the other half in your hand. Not a good situation. So have a metal or, or plastic speculum that you're going to pass that will guard that tube from being chewed in two. You're going to pass the tube and then you'll want to blow on the tube a couple of times to get feed stuff out away from the end of the tube and you'll know pretty quick then whether you have a frothy bloat or free gas. If you have free gas, you'll actually have gas coming out. You'll see the sides starting to, to not be as distended. If it's frothy, you'll actually have the froth come up the tube. If it is frothy bloat, leave the orogastric tube in. Have your therabloat, which is paloxylene. Paloxylene will come in a one ounce treatment vial and you will take that and mix that with a pint of water and then you'll pass that one ounce of, of therabloat in the pint of water into the room and you can add more water if you want. It'll disperse evenly and what that does is that starts to break that surface tension of the froth and will help that animal decrease the, the, the frothy bloat. Sometimes you have to retreat these animals, sometimes they become chronic frothy bloaters and those animals need to be, to be railed. If it's a free gas bloat, when you pass the, the orogastric tube, you will start to get the gas to come out, okay? Now, my rules on treatment of calves with free gas bloat, because we'll see these as, as repeat customers as well, is that I will treat them, I have the three strikes in their out rule. I will allow, I will let them down, let the gas down three times. On the third time, I'm gonna make a decision. Either I'm gonna put a fistula in the side of the animal, which is an actual open hole from the rumen outside the side of the animal. We can stitch the rumen wall to the, to the hide of the calf and he can let free gas go out continuously and that will take about six months to a year to, to uh, close. Or I'm going to rail that animal or, or sell it for salvage slaughter. It's the, it's the one or two things because if they continuously come in, you're going to wind up having that and the animal's either going to wind up dying or from bloat or you're going to wind up continuously having to treat them to let them down. When we come back, we're going to talk a little bit about emergency treatment of bloat on your farm with your, with your cattle, which is really important to, to understand and know. Thanks for watching Doc Talk. Thanks for being with us today. More about bloat and emergency treatment when we come back after these messages. Hi, I'm Randy. And I'm Paul from PFI. We would like to personally invite you to stop by PFI, home of Boot Daddies. PFI is America's Western store covering over 50,000 square feet. Over 25,000 boots. Visit Saddle City with the largest selection of saddles and tack anywhere. A huge selection of hats at Big Spur Hat Company in PFI Town. And choose from the best brands of clothing and accessories for the entire family. PFI, located on Highway 65 at the Battlefield exit in Springfield. And I'm not kidding. We do business with Blueville because of the quality of their work it is excellent quality and because they make a commitment to their customers. We enjoy the benefits of hiring a good company to help us maintain this home. We will always do business with Blueville. We have for many, many years and there's no reason for us to look for any other service. Hey folks, thanks for joining me on today's Cattle First Minute as sponsored by Beringer Engelheim Vet Medica. You know, when we start to think about breeding season and turning bulls out, the one thing I can't emphasize enough is to get a breeding soundness exam done on your bulls before turnout. And some of the things that can happen during the winter, whether it's frostbite in certain areas of the body or there's things that can happen that, that will cause a bull to become uh, infertile are things that you need to make sure. 
The other thing that's very important on a breeding soundness exam is we have to make sure that we don't have lameness or, or issues with the feet because no wheels, no calves. So making sure that we have a sound bowl structurally, making sure that we have one that's fertile and, and one that, that can produce enough sperm and enough volume with enough motility with no defects in the sperm is vitally important to making sure every year before you turn out to ensure that you get a calf crop at least from the bull's point of view. No matter where, no matter why, the Veterinary Health Center at Kansas State University is committed to providing quality patient care to animals and exceptional customer service to their owners. From routine checkups to emergency and specialty care, our world-renowned specialists and experienced professionals are here to discover, to teach, and to heal. Let us know. How can I help? How can we help? This segment brought to you by Kansas Farm Bureau, the voice of agriculture. To join today or more information, go to kfb.org or find us on Facebook or Twitter. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here. We're talking about bloat in cattle. So now you walk out to the, to the pen and you have a steer that's severely distended. This calf is a bloat score three. It's distended round on the left side, pear shape on the right side, and it's not functioning uh, appropriately. So we're in an emergency situation when this happens. The first thing that you're gonna wanna do is remember that the rumen is on the left side of the animal, not the right side of the animal. So if we're gonna do an emergency treatment of that animal in the pen, we're going to puncture the animal through the, the paralumbar fossa, or through the left side, as you can see in this picture, high on the left side at the apex of where that, that rumen is distended. So when we do this, we want to make sure that we use something that's, that's extremely sharp. If you puncture the animal on the right side of its body, you're not going to hit the rumen, you're not going to hit where the gas is, you're going to actually hit intestines. So make sure on the left side of the body. Okay. The first thing you have to understand is do not let the animal lay down. An animal that's severely bloated that lays down and then you go to the house to find a, a pocket knife or a bloat needle, that animal will die from suffocation before you get back to it. Once they lay down and they're super distended, um, the, the animal's not going to make it. So this is an emergency situation. So you can have a bloat needle, and I suggest to a lot of people that own feed yards or that are feeding cattle to have a bloat needle on their person. And, and the bloat needle is, is in this picture here, and you can see that there is a trocar and a stylus that goes down through it. This is extremely sharp. And you can puncture that animal on the left side, pull the, the stylus out and you have that trocar that's going through that's allowing the release of the pressure and that animal will, will immediately have relief. We have emergency uh, uh, trocars that you can use that, that will create a fistula in the side of that animal and these actually you can see from this picture you puncture and then you screw and it'll actually screw that rumen wall and screw the, the, the outside hide in that, in that paralumbar fossa together and we'll give you a couple of days to take that animal for salvage slaughter. The other thing, the last resort, is if you see the animal and you need to use a pocket knife or something to that nature, you can. Now, two things to understand about this. Number one, there's a reason why they make footballs out of cowhide. It's tough. So you need a sharp knife. And two, you do not want to have a jackknife that has a flexible blade. Make sure you have something that's a lock blade or something that is, is solid handle to the knife. I have used a, a pocket knife once to puncture and that thing came shut on my fingers. Do not use a Bowie knife, okay? There is some anatomy on the left side of that animal and you will cause some damage. So a short four to six inch blade, lock blade for your safety if you're going to use that to puncture an animal. Never let an animal with bloat lay down. Emergency situation. Have the proper tools in place. You can work with your veterinarian He'll have those tools or she will have those tools at her clinic and you can and then you can utilize them on your farm or ranch. Thanks for watching the show today. Remember if you want to find us on the web, you can go to www.doctalktv.com. Always work with your local veterinarian. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson here from Doc Talk. Thanks for watching us and I'll see you down the road.
closed captioning brought to you by Ag Promo Source. Together we grow. Learn more at agpromosource.com.